Invaders from Above, Part 1 Written by Derek Slayton Narrated by Aaron Smith Chapter 1 2.57 p.m. Sergeant Dario Estes pulled off of exit 232 on Interstate 17, taking note of the sign reading, Wrangler's Roost, two miles, with the tiny arrow pointing to the right. The drive from downtown Phoenix wasn't a bad one, about 35 miles, but even with the air conditioning in his rental car blowing at full blast, the August heat had sweat running down from his blonde hair all the way down between his muscular shoulder blades. He stopped at the light at the top of the exit, looking around at the tiny community. There was a gas station just across the way, and not much else other than empty heat-scorched earth as far as the eye could see. There were some hills in the near distance, and some mountains several miles away, but not much in the way of civilization. I know you aren't a fan of people, Colt, but this is a bit extreme. Dario muttered to himself under his breath. He made the turn, glancing down at his GPS as it adjusted to the next direction marker. In two miles, turn right, the robotic computerized voice informed him. He drove through the tiny community, a few homes and standalone buildings dotting the roadside. There was nothing extravagant, not even a supercenter, just the bare necessities along the road. There was a grocery store, a hardware store, and a couple of low-end general stores. Finally, Dario arrived at his turn, leading into a small gated community. He pulled through the gate that was wide open and drove into the neighborhood. The houses were modest, most single-story, but a couple of two-story ones. There wasn't much in the way of people outside, except for a few teenagers taking advantage of a pool in one backyard. He glanced at his GPS, which showed the house he was looking for was at the back of the neighborhood. He drove slowly, giving himself a few more brief moments to figure out what he was going to say to his old friend. It had been over a year since they'd spoken, which wasn't his decision. Colt had had it rough since returning from the sandbox, and he wasn't exactly the type to talk about his feelings. Dario finally found the house a large two-story home at the back of the neighborhood. As he drove by, he noticed the large deck on the back of the house that was higher than the fencing surrounding the yard. He shook his head. Always need that elevated position, he murmured with a soft chuckle. He got out of the car, taking a moment to glance into the back seat at his pressed and cleaned military uniform that was hanging from one of the hooks. While his superiors would have preferred him to wear it, Dario knew that if he was going to be successful with Colt, the jeans and t-shirt approach was the way to go. All right, here goes nothing, he huffed and got out of the car into the blistering heat. He walked up towards the house, but before he even made it to the front porch, Captain Colton Hodges stepped out the door, grinning ear to ear at his old friend. I'm retired, he said brightly, his dark hair a little shaggier than it had once been when he was still working. Dario laughed. Good to see you too, Captain, he replied. Colt held up a hand. Just getting the formalities out of the way, Sergeant, he said. Now that business is officially concluded, we can have a drink. They grabbed each other's hands and hugged, clapping one another on the back. Still gotta give the pitch. Dario admitted, apology already in his tone. But I'm not going to turn down a drink in this heat. Colt led him inside, and Dario looked around, noticing the decor was pretty sparse. There wasn't anything hanging on the walls, and a lone bookcase sat beside a giant TV with a few books and DVDs, a well-worn couch sitting in front of it. Love what you've done with the place, the sergeant commented. Very minimalist. Colt shrugged, not offended in the slightest. What can I say? He asked. I'm a simple man with simple needs. He led his friend into the kitchen, a standard setup except for the presence of a second refrigerator. 
Dario furrowed his brow at that, but it quickly became clear what it was for when his friend opened one of them, and it was completely stuffed with beer. A beer fridge, huh? the sergeant asked dryly. That's not concerning at all, Colt chuckled. Eh, the kegerator was back-ordered, so I improvised, he said with a shrug as he pulled out two bottles. You make do with what you got. That wasn't my concern, the sergeant said, staring down his nose at his friend. The captain ignored this, sliding a cold one across the kitchen island. I know, but I'm not a big fan of painkillers, so I gotta do something, he said. He cracked his bottle open and inclined his head towards the back of the house. Come on, let's hit the patio. You gotta see this view. Dario opened his own bottle and shook his head in confusion. It's over a hundred out, and you want to sit outside? He asked. Trust me, the view's worth it, Colt insisted, and led him out. His friend shrugged to himself and followed. If his pitch was going to be successful, Colt would have to be as comfortable as possible. As they walked upstairs, Dario noticed that there was nothing on the walls much like the main floor. No photos, no military relics, just plain white paint. Guess living this far out makes it hard to find a professional framer, huh? He asked, voice casual, but hoping it would get his friend to talk about his lack of military displays. The captain had more than a few medals lying around, and most of the ex-military guys he knew displayed them proudly and prominently. If I had something worth framing, I'd make the drive, Colt muttered, and his friend decided not to press the issue. They entered a back bedroom that had a small guest bed and nothing else in the room. A sliding glass door led out onto the patio, with a switch that Colt flicked on as he crossed the threshold. As they stepped beneath the canopy, a cool, fine mist spritzed down on them. Ah, that's a nice touch, Dario admitted as he sat down in one of the two wooden chairs. Need to be able to fully admire the view, Colt said as he took his own seat and pointed off into the distance. The sergeant had to admit, it was a wondrous view. They were elevated and could see over the hills in the distance, rolling as far as the eye could see. What are we looking at? Dario asked, taking a swig of the cold beer and near moaning at the feel of the icy carbonation on his tongue and throat. I mean, what direction? Headed southwest back towards Phoenix, Colt replied, leaning back in his chair. It's not much to look at now but when that sun starts to set, you're going to be in for quite a show. Assuming you aren't due back tonight. The sergeant shook his head. They gave me 48 hours, he said. Colt smirked. Good thing I picked up some extra steaks then, he quipped, his tone good-natured. If memory serves, you're one hell of a grill master, Dario said with a grin. His friend's smile was one. Good to see you haven't entirely forgotten about me, he said, voice a little softer than before. Dario leaned forward, resting his arms on his knees. You know I've tried to reach out, he said, all trace of humor gone from his voice. Several times since... Since the military said they were done with me? Colt interrupted with a scoff. Yeah, I know. Dario took a deep breath. I don't know the full story, but the military isn't done with you if you don't want them to. I know it's not you, the captain cut in again, raising his beer as if in a toast. I just kind of shut down after the attack and the push-out. Took me six months of intensive rehab after the mortar, but I'm back in peak physical condition. Did the higher-ups care? He shook his head bitterly. Nope, not one bit. They didn't listen to what I had to say, just some doctor that claimed I would most likely need meds to mitigate the pain. That was all they needed to hear, and bam, no more long-range missions. Did they not give you any options outside of retirement? Dario asked, his eyes wide. Colt barked a humorless laugh. Yeah, 
They said I could take some job at one of the stateside bases, he said, shaking his head. Something about my skill as a sniper would be valuable to a new generation of warriors, or some BS like that. He took a long swig of his beer, and they sat in silence for a moment. You've known me for, what, the better part of a decade? Could you ever imagine me as an instructor, or sitting behind a desk? The sergeant swallowed hard, his mouth going dry, and he raised his beer to his lips, taking a few long gulps to gather his thoughts. It didn't escape Colt's notice, though, and he cocked a brow. Let me guess, that's why they sent you out here, he asked dryly. Well, Dario began, clearing his throat nervously. You do have more field time than any of the instructors we currently have. The captain laughed again, taking another sip. You had to have known I'd say no before agreeing to come out here, he accused. I figured as much, the sergeant admitted. But if the military wants to pay me to hang out with an old friend for a couple of days while I make my pitch, who am I to say no? They shared another laugh and clinked bottles, both of which sounded light on liquid. I hope there's more where this came from. Dario said, though he obviously knew that was a yes, considering the packed fridge in the kitchen. Oh, plenty, Colt said, motioning behind the sergeant. Dario turned and saw a mini-fridge plugged in along the wall, and he laughed, shaking his head. A mini-fridge with a backup giant fridge. Gotcha, he said, and reached over to replenish their drinks. He was looking forward to spending a couple of days here. A high-pitched engine noise cut the air, and the sergeant's eyes turned skyward. I can see why you could afford this place, he said. Nothing like living in the flight path of the airport. He chuckled and glanced at his friend, but Colt's gaze looked on edge, concerned. There is no flight path, the captain said as the engine roars grew louder. Dario shook his head. Then what the hell is that? he asked and the noise built and built. Both men stood up, looking around, and then something blew over the house at low altitude. In fact, it was a lot of somethings. Some things that neither man could explain. The ships. Because they were clearly some kind of airship, but nothing like they'd ever seen, were about ten yards wide and thirty yards long, glowing with strips of bright blue running vertically along the belly and across the short wings. They were stretched across the horizon, flying in formation in several rows. Does that look like any plane you've ever seen? Dario breathed. Colt shook his head. Never seen anything like it, he admitted. Russians? Dario tried, voice rising in pitch. Chinese? The captain pursed his lips. No. I don't think so, he said flatly. The two men stood there, bewildered at the sight before them. Their minds raced, trying to come up with some rational explanation for the scene unfolding above them. The mood was broken quickly when an explosion boomed from the west. The blast not only startled them, but rattled the glass on the house. Was that? Dario asked, throat suddenly dry. Yeah, Colt replied in a clipped tone. Come on. He took one more swig of beer before tossing the bottle to the side. The duo rushed inside and down the stairs as the noises above them continued to grow in intensity. As they reached the ground floor, another massive explosion came from the west. Colt led Dario towards the side of the house, moving at a brisk pace. The door at the end of the hall wasn't like the others. It was a metal security door with a keypad on the outside of it. He flipped up the panel and punched in a six-digit code before hitting the pound key. It made a buzzing sound, barely audible over the tremendous cacophony outside, and the door clicked open. Overhead lights immediately flickered on as they stepped inside the small room. Along the walls were a collection of guns, weapons, and gear. In the center of the room sat a table, which had a giant 50 cal sniper rifle sitting on it. Colt took command easily falling into old patterns, and pointed to the wall filled with semi-automatic rifles and other gear. You good to spot me? he asked. Dario nodded easily. Just like old times, 
he said. Specs are in the top drawer, the captain said, motioning. Get a weapon. Another explosion rocked in the distance, and Colt cocked his head. Grab a rifle for me too. He quickly checked the status of his sniper rifle, grabbing a large magazine from underneath the table and slapping it in. He grabbed a second mag and tossed it on the table, which Dario grabbed as he packed a small ammo bag for them. I'm guessing that thing outside doesn't have four-wheel drive, Colt asked. The sergeant snorted, shaking his head. It barely had enough power to get me here, he said. We're taking my truck, his friend quipped, leading the way out the door. Dario nodded and slung the bag and two rifles over his shoulder, following Colt out of the door and to the garage, where there was a large older model truck sitting there. They quickly hopped into the cab as the garage door opened, and Colt fired up the truck, giving it a moment to warm up as the noise and explosions continued outside. Before he moved, Colt took a deep breath and turned to his friend. I know I'm not a captain anymore, but... Dario nodded sharply. I'm following your lead, he confirmed. The captain returned the nod as he popped the truck into gear. Just need to make sure we're on the same page, he said, and peeled out of the garage, whipping the vehicle around on the road and speeding off towards the source of the explosions. It didn't take them long to see smoke rising in the distance towards the interstate. Several people emerged from their houses, standing in their yards watching the smoke rise, some of them flinching and fleeing back indoors when one of the smaller ships strafed over the area near the interstate, sending out a barrage of bright blue plasma bolts. What the hell are they firing? Dario breathed. Another explosion went off as the blasts hit the ground, shaking the truck. Whatever it is, it's powerful, Colt said, and drove them out of the neighborhood, narrowly avoiding being broadsided by a speeding sedan fleeing from the direction of the interstate. The tires squealed as they struggled to gain traction, but finally caught. They looked up ahead on the road at all of the traffic barreling towards them, vehicles in both lanes not caring about traffic laws. Colt didn't hesitate, quickly pulling the vehicle off-road. They dipped down into a ditch before popping into the air slightly, landing hard but continuing out into the desert. As Colt focused on the road, Dario looked up. The small fleet of ships flying overhead continued, but began to taper off. There must be two hundred of those ships, he said. Whoever they are, they're certainly showing up in force, Colt muttered dryly. He sped off-road for half a mile before making a hard westward turn. They were to the north of the numerous smoke plumes still coming up. The strafing from the smaller ship had stopped, but two mid-sized ones hovered overhead. There's something you don't see every day, Dario said, voice still full of awe. Colt glanced over at the hovering ships. He didn't respond, just hit the gas a little harder to get them to their destination quicker. Finally, after several bumpy moments, he slammed on the brakes beside one of the mid-sized hills that were close to the interstate. Let's move, the captain said, and they both hopped out. Colt grabbed his sniper rifles out of the back, and the two men quickly huffed it up the steep incline, the captain taking the lead. As Dario tried to keep up, he wondered just how wrong that doctor had been to claim his old friend wasn't in top shape. Finally, they made it to the top, Colt slowing down and lowering into a crouch. He motioned for Dario to do the same, and they set up their sniper position at the top of the hill. There was a smallish flat area at the top giving them space to lie low. Colt spread the kickstand legs open and set up his fifty cal as Dario looked through the binoculars towards the smoke. They both got ready about the same time, seeing the same thing. The interstate was a mess, with several burning and overturned transport trucks which were blocking the entire interstate. Some people were running from the carnage as smaller blue bolts of light flew by them, impacting cars. Finally, one of the people was hit in the back, the bolt ripping right through them. Do you see a target? Colt asked. Dario shook his head. I can't see past the smoke, he replied. As more people ran, some falling dead, the smoke began to clear. When it finally dispersed, 
Both men froze at the sight of large, otherworldly warriors emerging, shooting plasma weapons towards the fleeing civilians. The creatures were between six and seven feet tall, wearing mostly black, metallic-looking armor. There were bright blue veins coursing through it, running up the arms and legs and through the torso, a few inches wide and very visible, glowing brightly in the night. Despite the metallic look, the creature was very sleek-looking, polished with no apparent jagged edges. It did have a double metal holster on either side of it, but neither man could tell what was in there. Its face was mostly blank, with only the faintest of features visible through a protective visor. Both men looked away from their respective long-range devices, glancing at each other in disbelief. I don't think they're from around here, Dario said slowly. As more blasts and screams erupted from the interstate, Colt's gaze hardened. Let's give them a proper welcome, then, he said, voice lethal. Dario nodded, and they fell into attack mode. Colt looked through the scope, picking out his target. A big sucker in the center of the line of five creatures walked in between the wreckage and forced parked vehicles. Center target acquired, the captain said. Got him, Dario confirmed. Eight hundred yards. Fire when ready. Colt took a deep breath, steadying himself as he aimed at the creature's head. After several moments of tracking, he adjusted his aim properly before squeezing the trigger. The fifty cal sounded like a cannon going off, sending the large round downrange. It took a fraction of a second for it to reach its destination, which was squarely between the eyes of the marching creature. The impact was forceful enough to send the thing stumbling backwards to the ground, but upon impact it triggered a brilliant prismatic flash that rippled throughout the creature, starting from the impact zone and going to its toes. Direct hit, Dario cried in excitement. You sure? Colt asked. The sergeant quickly went back to his binoculars, finding the supposedly downed target as his companion continued to train his sights on it. They both watched in horror as the creature that just took a fifty cal round to the face picked itself up off of the ground as if nothing had happened. That's less than ideal, Colt breathed. One o'clock, Dario barked suddenly, and the captain quickly shifted his aim to the one o'clock position, finding the next creature had pulled out some sort of alien binoculars, looking directly at them. Colt didn't hesitate, aiming and pulling the trigger. His aim was spot on once again, ripping through the device and sending the creature to the ground, the same prismatic force field sparking up upon impact. Both men sat there, the captain still aiming at the creature, hoping that the first shot had somehow glanced off and these things weren't actually immune to bullets. If a fifty cal sniper round wouldn't down them, he wasn't sure that anything they had access to would. It didn't take long for both of them to be disappointed, because the alien began to move. Damn it, Colt muttered, his blood running cold. The sound of an engine started to get louder and louder as the captain continued to stare downrange. Dario looked up at a smaller fighter ship from earlier headed directly for them, flying over the aliens they were firing at. We gotta move, we gotta move, Dario yelled, and began backing up towards the edge of the hill grabbing Colt and giving him a sharp tug to get him out of his aiming trance. The captain looked up at the ship bearing down on them and grabbed his rifle as he sprung up, headed towards the edge of the hill as he heard the ship begin to fire. The two men barely got behind cover as blue plasma bolts slammed into the top of the hill, sending blue flames flying out in every direction, ripping off part of the hill in the process. As the ship flew by their position, they ran hard down the hill, struggling to keep their balance. What the hell do we do now? Dario asked. We gotta get back to the house, Colt barked. They skidded to the bottom of the hill and tore for the truck as the ship began to turn back towards them. The speed of the vessel was enough that it took it half a mile away from them before it was able to slow down and turn, buying them a few precious seconds. Colt got in and fired up the truck as Dario hopped into the passenger seat. Before he could even shut the door, Colt floored it. As the truck bounced around on the uneven terrain, Dario looked back, 
his gut sinking at the sight of the ship now turned and making a beeline for them. It's on our six, he warned. Give me the signal, Colt replied. The sergeant watched intently as the ship continued to gain ground, getting closer and closer. He didn't know what its offensive capability was, but he knew it was going to have to get somewhat close to them before firing to have a chance at hitting them. Another few seconds, he yelled, Move! and somehow miraculously timed it perfectly, because Colt cut the wheel for the truck just before the enemy fired. They careened out of the way of the blast, which hit several yards to the side of them. The concussion from the blast, however, was powerful enough to crack the back glass of the truck. Dario looked back, seeing the ship making adjustments to do another run at them. You think those ships have shields? he asked. I know one way to find out, Colt replied as he continued to maneuver at high speed. The sergeant nodded and grabbed his rifle, positioning himself out the window and aiming back towards the ship. He knew it was going to be a near impossible shot, but they had to try something. He waited until it was lined up with them, coming at them in a straight line before firing. He pulled the trigger rapidly, sending round after round towards it, spraying and praying that something would hit. Dario emptied half a magazine towards it, but never saw any kind of barrier come up. Finally, the ship quickly broke off its pursuit of them, flying back towards the interstate. Did you hit it? Colt asked. I don't know, Dario replied as he slipped back into his seat. But it ain't following us anymore. Good enough for me, the captain quipped, and got them back on the road about half a mile from his house. Another engine rumbled, this one louder than the ones before it, and Dario whipped his gaze back, spotting one of the mid-sized ships coming their way and quickly. I don't think my gun's going to do much against that, he warned. Hang on! Colt yelled and cut the wheel hard, sending the tires squealing as they blew into the neighborhood. The ship began to hover overhead, and the captain slammed on the brakes a quarter mile down the road, bringing them to a screeching halt. What are you doing there, Cap? Dario asked, voice strained. If it was going to fire at us, it would have done so by now. Colt replied eerily calm. The sergeant gaped at him. Not sure if that qualifies as an answer, he exclaimed. Colt shrugged. I want to see what it's going to do, he admitted. Dario's blood pounded in his ears, but he nodded in agreement, and the two of them looked back towards the ship. It lowered to about ten yards off of the ground, and a trap door opened on the underside. One of the aliens leapt to the ground, landing hard on the asphalt, denting it in the process, with no ill effects to the creature in the slightest. You keep shooting at it, Colt instructed, Make sure it follows us. Dario stared at him, wide-eyed. So you want to antagonize the thing that brushes off a fifty cal shot to the face? He demanded. We need to figure out how to get past their defenses, and this may be our only shot. The captain replied firmly. There's one of them, and we may never see that again. The sergeant knew Colt was right, even if he wasn't happy with the situation. He nodded, took a deep breath, and leaned out the window aiming at the alien creature. He let out a sharp whistle. We're over here, sunshine, he called in a teasing voice, and squeezed off a shot, hitting the monster in the chest, activating its prismatic force field. The creature let out a roar, loud enough for the sergeant to hear, causing the hair on the back of his neck to stand up. Oh, Dario muttered, I probably shouldn't have done that. The alien took off running covering a lot of ground quickly as its long legs pounded the pavement. Go, go, go! Dario screamed, and Colt floored it as the sergeant continued to shoot. His bullets bounced off of the alien harmlessly as it gained ground on them. Gotta go faster! Dario cried, and Colt glanced in the rear view at the rapidly approaching creature. He sped up a bit as the bullet barrage continued. Almost to the house, he called. Get ready to move! Dario got back into the cab, loading in another mag as they got closer to the house. The alien still hot on their heels. Colt hit the garage door button, pulling the remote off of the visor. He slammed on the brakes in the driveway, the two men getting out and rushing towards the slowly opening door. Both men rushed out from the truck as the alien ran towards them, the duo sprinting towards the garage door. They both slid underneath the door and as soon as they were clear, Colt hit the button to bring it back down. 
Get to the weapons room, Colt barked. Before they could get halfway across the garage, a horrific sound bellowed from the garage door, the gears grinding. They turned just as a brilliant blue light exploded in the middle of it, severing the mechanism. In one quick movement, the door ripped open from the center, the blue light slicing right through the door like it wasn't even there. The alien stepped through the opening, its weapon by its side. A blue flame sparked up, starting at the creature's right elbow. It was a few inches above its armor and it lit up, extending down the entirety of its arm before curving into a yard-long blade. The alien clenched its fist like it was grabbing onto a handle for the plasma flame sword. Both Colt and Dario stood there for a moment, taking stock of the situation. Dario raised his rifle and pulled the trigger as fast as he could, the bullets just bouncing off the creature like it was nothing. It just stood there, like an animal asserting dominance, mocking the soldiers as the bullets smacked it uselessly. Move! Colt screamed, and both men ran inside, slamming the door behind them, the captain flicking the deadbolt shut. Oh, yeah, that'll hold it, Dario said, his voice on the edge between hysteria and sarcasm. Colt smacked the door and it gave a metallic thud. Steel door, he quipped, should buy us a minute. A blue light brightened the top of the door, slowly moving down it. The steel gave some resistance, but ultimately was no match for the hot flame. Or not, Colt grunted. Come on. They ran to the weapons room, and the captain went straight to the wall with the combat shotguns, tossing one to Dario as he opened up the drawer beneath it. He studied the shells for a moment, before pulling a box from the back, slamming it onto the table. Metal slugs, he explained as he opened the box. Strongest thing I got. You got anything heavier? The sergeant asked, eyeing the bullets as if they were nothing more than styrofoam. Colt pursed his lips for a beat. I might have a souvenir from the sandbox, he admitted, and walked over to a nearby safe, quickly punching in a code. Inside were a couple of hand grenades and some other items. He grabbed one before going over to the rifles and pulling one down. Those don't work, the sergeant said, shaking his head. I have some fragmentation bullets, Colt explained. Dario threw up his hands. Fifty cal doesn't work and you think those might? he demanded. The captain glared at him, speaking forcefully. We don't know what is going to work, so we have to try everything we can think of, he said, voice lethal. If we can't get past their shields, then this is going to be a really quick invasion. So if you think of something, try it. Dario nodded in silent agreement as he loaded up the two shotguns, and Colt did the same with two mags in the rifles. He looked down the hall, seeing that the blue light was almost through the door. Come on, we have to get into position, the captain instructed. They exchanged weapons so that they both had a shotgun and a rifle, and ran by the door, which was barely standing at that point. As they vanished into the house, the steel finally gave way, and the alien busted into the hallway, looking down towards the weapons room, strolling slowly towards it to inspect it. It looked through the door, looking over the weapons inside, speaking in a strange guttural clicking language for several seconds, before going silent again. Before it could turn back around, however, Dario emerged from the other end of the hallway, aiming his rifle downrange. He fired several of the fragmentation rounds, which broke apart on impact on the prismatic shield. The various pieces of the bullet debris impacted it in several different spots, acting like pebbles on a still pond, causing ripple effects across the creature's shield, but not penetrating it. The alien just slowly turned, pulling out its sidearm. It powered up with a glowing blue light before firing a plasma bolt down the hallway. Dario quickly dove out of the way, narrowly avoiding being cooked by it. The sergeant scrambled to his feet as the alien warrior marched down the hall towards the living room. As soon as it came around the corner, Colt popped up from behind the sofa five yards away, aiming the shotgun directly at the creature's chest. He fired around, hitting the warrior directly in its chest, causing its shield to activate. Colt quickly chambered another round and fired, getting the same result, then was forced to run for cover around a wall leading to the kitchen as the alien raised its sidearm to charge up another blue blast. The plasma bolt flew through the air, narrowly missing Colt as he ducked behind the wall. 
The impact broke apart the corner of the wall before the bolt continued through to the glass patio door, shattering it and petering out once it hit the ground. The alien marched towards the kitchen wall with a deliberate pace, almost like it wasn't concerned with the threat the two soldiers posed. As it got to the wall, there was a loud metallic thud on the ground in front of it. The alien looked down at a frag grenade spinning on the floor in front of it. It cocked its head with something akin to curiosity, as if unsure of what the device was. The creature was quickly educated when the grenade went off. The force of the blast was strong enough to send the alien flying backwards into the living room, crashing into the TV stand, shattering everything its body came into contact with. Dario emerged from the other side of the wall, peeking at the alien, dismayed when it pulled itself up off of the ground. This thing's still kicking, the sergeant bellowed. The alien got up, not making sounds, but from the puffing up of its chest it was clearly angry. It extended its arm and fired up the flaming plasma sword, just as Colt darted round the wall shotgun raised. Hit it with everything you've got, the captain yelled. Both men unloaded on it, Colt firing the shotgun and Dario hitting it with the fragmentation bullets. The alien just stood there, flexing, the bullets causing a spectacular visual display with the prismatic shield as they bounced off of it, flickering on and off as the bullets reached their targets. After a couple of seconds of sustained fire, the men stopped, out of ammo on the weapons they held. Colt flipped his shotgun around, gripping it by the still warm barrel, rushing the alien to attack it. The creature swung the plasma sword across its body, forcing the captain to duck down. As soon as the sword cleared his head, Colt swung upwards with the shotgun, trying to hit the alien in its nether region. The shield activated, the force of the swing powerful enough to crack the handle of the weapon. Rather than attack with the sword, the alien grabbed Colt by the throat, pulling him off of the ground as if he were light as a ragdoll, staring him in the eyes. Colt snatched the alien's wrist, trying to relieve some of the pressure on his neck. Yeah, you better get a good look before I kill you. He choked out and pulled out a knife, trying to jam it into the creature's eye. The shield activated, preventing the blade from getting through. Colt pushed with everything he had for several seconds, the shield continuing to protect the beast. After four seconds of this, the captain noticed that the shield flickered for a tiny fraction of a second, and he felt a little give on the blade. The alien seemed to notice this too, and immediately whipped Colt across the room. The captain landed hard on the floor, sliding into the hallway that led to the garage. Colt! Dario screamed, dropping his rifle and swinging the shotgun around from his pack. He managed to squeeze off a single shot as the alien marched towards him, but it was deflected by the prismatic shield. Rather than fire up the plasma sword, the creature reached into a different holster, pulling out what looked like a syringe gun as it approached the sergeant, who was frantically chambering another round. Before he could fire, the alien backhanded him, knocking the gun from his hand and sending him tumbling to the floor, his back slamming hard into the wall. Stars exploded in his vision, and he sat there, dazed as the alien stalked towards him, the strange-looking gun in its hand. Dario reached up as the alien reached down for him, grabbing the creature by the wrist to try to keep the needle from getting to him. He struggled against the immense power of the alien as it reached down with its offhand to break the grip. The sergeant was quickly losing his ability to keep the alien at bay, but it let up at the sound of a pull motor click. Both creature and human looked over to the hallway, where Colt stood with a large chainsaw. He pulled the trigger, revving it up and sending a deafening blast of noise roaring through the living room. He can wait his turn, the captain said with something akin to glee in his eyes. I'm not through with you yet. The alien let go of Dario, holstering the syringe gun and firing up its plasma sword. Once this happened, the two got into a bit of a standoff, pausing briefly to take stock of each other. Finally, the captain let out a grunt and rushed the creature, swinging the chainsaw towards it. The alien darted back, avoiding the metal blade before retaliating with a swing of its own, which Colt ducked out of the way of. 
As the alien got ready to strike again with his sword, Colt deftly jabbed the chainsaw at the creature, hitting it in the chest and activating the prismatic shield. The alien pulled the sword up high, bringing it down like he wanted to cut Colt in half, but the captain quickly moved out of the way and the sword slammed into the floor. The attack was with such force that the tip of the sword embedded through the wood and into the concrete foundation below. Colt seized the moment and brought the chainsaw above its head, quickly slamming it down towards his opponent. The alien raised its hand, grabbing the blade. The captain hit the trigger, and the metal ground against the prismatic shield, keeping it constantly firing. Come on, be right, be right, Colt grunted and pushed down with everything he had, counting in his head. Three, four, five. At that, the shield petered out, and the chainsaw sliced through the alien's hand, blue blood splattering everywhere. The creature let out a horrific, inhuman shriek as its hand was torn to shreds. Dario, head! Colt barked, and the sergeant scrambled to his feet, snatching his shotgun and putting it to the side of the alien's head. He didn't hesitate in pulling the trigger, sending a solid round at point-blank range into the side of the creature's skull. The top portion of its head exploded, demolishing it and sending blue gunk all over the place. Colt finally let go of the chainsaw trigger, and the room fell eerily silent as the alien slumped to the floor, the plasma sword retracting and disappearing as the body collapsed completely. Both men stood there, breathing heavily, bewildered and relieved, shock taking hold. Dario finally took in a sharp breath, reaching out to clap his friend on the shoulder. So, a chainsaw, huh? he asked, and though he was aiming for levity, the words came out shaky. Yeah, chainsaw, Colt replied with a nod, voice just as breathy. The sergeant shook his head slowly as he continued to look at the body. I wouldn't have thought of that, he admitted. Neither would I, Colt agreed. But when I used my knife on it, I saw the shield flicker after a few seconds. Figured it must have a short battery life if it was left on. So I went with the best weapon I could find in the garage. Dario nodded thoughtfully. Those shields are going to be a bitch and a half to deal with. But at least they can be dealt with, he mused and leaned down, reaching for one of the alien weapons. Colt grabbed his arm to stop him. The sergeant glanced up at him curiously. You don't think we can use this stuff? He asked. I think we don't know enough about it to try right now, the captain replied firmly. Plus, if I was a betting man, I'd wager those things are booby-trapped or proprietary. If they've mastered interstellar travel and personal force fields... I doubt they'd be dumb enough to let their weapons fall into enemy hands. Dario nodded, drawing his hand back immediately. That's a valid point, he conceded. Besides, we have more pressing matters. Colt huffed, attempting to wipe some of the blue blood off on his pants, but finding them soaked as well. Like what? the sergeant asked. We know how to kill these things, Colt replied, straightening. We have to let the right people know. Dario nodded and pulled out his cell phone, checking it over to find it had miraculously survived the fight. Right, I'll call it in, he said, and tapped the screen. He wrinkled his nose. No signal. He held the device above his head, watching the screen, but there were still no bars of reception. Colt walked over to the landline on the wall, picking it up, but there was no dial tone. Nothing, he said, and slammed the phone back into its cradle. Dario took a deep breath. Don't suppose you have a carrier pigeon, he asked warily as he shoved his cell phone back into his pocket. Can't say that I do, the captain replied, and then, without missing a beat, added, Plus, in Arizona heat, they'd probably burst into flames even if I did. The sergeant took a deep breath. So, what do we do? he asked. Colt thought to himself for a moment before slowly nodding. My hunting cabin he said. Dario cocked a brow. You have a hunting cabin? he asked. The captain nodded, jerking a thumb over his shoulder. Yeah, about fifteen miles to the west, just outside of Lake Pleasant, he explained. Off the grid and secluded, 
but has a solar power generator and, more importantly, a ham radio. Dario nodded in response. That's as good a plan as any, he said. Colt tossed the chainsaw onto the destroyed sofa, waved a hand, and said, Let's get geared up, then. Chapter 2 Colt and Dario loaded up every bit of gear they could. The sergeant had a couple of large duffel bags and shoved boxes of ammunition into them. While he did that, Colt checked several weapons to make sure they were operational, and loaded them full. There were a few shotguns, a scoped hunting rifle, a few assault rifles, and a smattering of handguns. You think you got enough weapons there, Captain? Dario asked dryly. Colt shrugged. Retirement was getting dull, he admitted. Only so many sunsets you can watch. Dario held up one of the ammo boxes, wiggling it in the air. Here's to boredom, he said in a mock cheers. Going to come in handy today. They finished getting their stuff together as more explosions went off in the distance. The captain paused. That one sounded close, he murmured. They aren't was? Dario asked. Colt headed for the door. Let's not hang around and find out, he said, and led the way quickly through the steel door that was in pieces. The sergeant stopped for a moment to inspect the damage. He shook his head as he looked at it. The side of the door melted like a hasty weld had been done. They made it to the truck, loading in the gear in the cab behind the seats. An enemy ship flew overhead, as if it was scanning the neighborhood, and they scrambled out of sight, standing at the edge of the garage and looking out. The ship hovered low, about forty or fifty yards off of the ground, flying in a pattern over the houses. They could see people across the street cowering behind windows, huddled and afraid. Okay, when that thing makes another pass, we're getting to the truck, Colt said as he took in his terrified neighbors. They were retirees and families, not soldiers like he and the sergeant. And then what? Dario asked. Colt shrugged. Hope we have better acceleration than it does, he said. The sergeant let out a horror laugh and shook his head. Good to see nothing's changed with you, he quipped. They stepped back behind cover as the ship came back overhead, and as soon as it was clear, Colt barked. Move! And they bolted. They made it to the truck and dove in, and Colt fired up the vehicle. Keep eyes on it, he instructed. Copy that. Dario said and peered out the window. Colt hit the gas, and they spun around violently in the road before he put it in drive and floored it. The tires took a moment to catch, but when they did, they picked up speed quickly. Dario watched the ship continue its sweep. Where is it at? Colt asked. Still not noticed us, the sergeant replied. A moment later, the ship made a quick turn to the left, almost like a turntable spinning around. Dario tensed, gripping his assault rifle tightly. Got movement, he warned. Where? Colt asked. Dario watched the ship, but confusion furrowed his brow when it didn't spin completely around. Instead, it began firing towards some houses at the far end of the neighborhood. A fireball erupted from the ground, and the ship continued to hover there. Talk to me, Colt snapped. The sergeant gaped for a bit. It's shooting your neighbors, he finally said. What? Colt demanded, continuing to speed through the neighborhood as Dario tried to figure out what was going on. As they sped through the next cross street, he spotted a couple of civilians down the road carrying weapons, firing back towards the ship. A split second later, the ship fired. Only this time, there was no explosion. There were dozens of impacts on the ground, and rather than falling to the ground, the men began to digitize. They began vanishing from the hands as the effect quickly moved through their bodies. What the hell? Dario breathed. What? Colt snapped, clearly agitated with the lack of information. They... they vanished, the sergeant stammered. Hang on, the captain warned, and cut hard out onto the main road out of the neighborhood. What do you mean, they vanished? I don't know, Dario admitted, shaking his head in disbelief. One second they were there, then poof. Those things do something? 
Colt asked. The ship was focused on them, and there were impacts on the ground, Dario replied. So, probably? The captain took a deep breath. Backburner it, he instructed. Where's the ship? Dario looked back, and the ship was moving away from them, towards downtown. A few seconds later, several more went screaming towards Phoenix, but too far to spot the truck. Headed towards Phoenix, the sergeant reported. Colt nodded and pulled to the side of the road. Off-roading it? Dario asked. The captain nodded and pointed. Cabin's on the other side of the interstate, he explained. Pretty sure we don't want to cross there. Dario looked towards the interstate, which was a few miles away. There were half a dozen alien ships hovering above it, facing every direction, as if they were protecting something on the ground. He swallowed hard. Yeah, a detour might be worthwhile, he agreed, though he sounded reluctant. You thinking what I'm thinking? Colt asked. Dario sighed. You want to see what they're protecting, don't you? He groaned. The captain nodded as he slowed down. You can't tell me that you're not curious, he prodded. Curiosity is what caused us to have a chainsaw fight in your living room, Dario shot back. Colt smirked. See, good things happen when you're curious, he said, and made the turn towards the same hill they'd been on earlier. Anything on the ships? Dario shook his head as they drove, keeping a close eye on them. Nothing, he said. So, either we're far enough away that they can't spot us, or we're far enough away that we're not a threat to whatever they're doing. Not sure if either is particularly comforting, Colt said, and pulled up to a stop at the base of the same hill they'd started on. The duo hopped out, each of them taking binoculars and an assault rifle before double-timing it up to the top. As they approached, they slowed down and got low, not wanting to expose themselves at all this time. When they were within view, they laid down, pulling out their specks and investigating the scene. It was chaos on the interstate. There were a couple dozen alien soldiers moving around with hundreds of civilians in the road. Some were being brought from the cars, others from the other side of the interstate. Where are they getting all those people from? Dario wondered. Can't all be from the traffic jam. Big shopping center on the other side of the road, Colt murmured, and his companion nodded as they continued to scan the area. There was a lot of commotion, but they finally spotted what they were looking for. There were a couple of mid-sized ships in the middle of the road, surrounded by thin metal barriers. Aliens forced people into them, where they were out of sight. What the hell is going on, Cap? Dario breathed. Colt took a deep breath. Looks like they're prisoners, he said. Prisoners? The sergeant asked, shaking his head in exasperation. They were blasting the hell out of people earlier. If you want to go down there and ask them, I'm happy to wait, the captain replied dryly. Dario sighed. Yeah, point taken, he said. Still, doesn't it strike you as weird? Colt stared at him, deadpan, the universal look for, are you serious? Yeah, you got the point, the sergeant admitted, shaking his head. Only normal thing about today was drinking a beer on the patio. Before they could retreat, helicopter blades echoed in the distance. The duo looked around, using the binoculars to look out across the horizon. Finally, they spotted a trio of military attack choppers flying up the middle of the highway. This should be interesting, Colt murmured. Both men slid down a bit from the top of the hill, less interested in what was happening on the ground than what was about to happen in the skies. The helicopters continued to get closer, within a mile of the formation of the enemy ships, but none of them had budged. They continued to sit there for several moments, the sound of the helicopter blades getting louder, but still nothing from the aliens. What are they waiting on? Dario wondered. Either they're on break or they really don't see us as a threat, Colt said dryly. The sergeant sighed. Let's hope it's the former, he said. When the helicopters got within half a mile, they broke formation, getting a little further apart from each other. As soon as they did, a lone alien ship broke away from the formation, the others closing ranks behind it, keeping their defensive position solid. The alien ship accelerated quickly, speeding straight for the center helicopter. 
The pilot of the chopper let loose two missiles towards the enemy, but the alien craft didn't deviate from its course. Just before the missiles would have impacted the vessel, it dropped violently a hundred yards or so in a fraction of a second, the danger flying harmlessly overhead. The ship banked upwards, firing two blue plasma bolts hitting the helicopter on the bottom. It spun around as it flew through the explosive debris from the chopper as it spun to the ground. Colt looked back towards the ships on the interstate, tracking the missiles as they hurtled towards it. Well before they reached it, one of the defensive ships fired several blue plasma bolts towards it. They detonated just before reaching the missiles, sending up a debris field that impacted the projectiles. The missiles exploded over the interstate, sending flaming debris to the ground below. The alien ship flew high into the air, aligning itself with the sun, making it difficult to see. The other two chopper pilots were forced to make adjustments to take out the ship. As they tried to locate the alien vessel, it descended from the heavens, using the sun as cover. Unlike the last attack, it didn't fire. Instead, a bright blue light illuminated around the outer edges of the craft. By the time the helicopters could react, it was too late. The alien ship flew straight through the top of the first chopper, cutting right through it. The blades flew off into the distance, the machine hovering there for a brief second before falling towards the ground. The alien ship continued to dive bomb, pulling up at the last second, skimming across the interstate. It pulled up quickly, going towards the other chopper. Just before it would have impacted, the helicopter pilot managed to veer out of the way. The wind shear from the flyby caused the helicopter to go out of control and spin violently. The pilot was skilled enough to get it back under control, doing evasive maneuvers as the alien ship sent a few blue bolts towards it. The helicopter unleashed a minigun on it, sending hundreds of rounds towards it. The alien craft didn't do anything to evade the oncoming fire, instead opting to fly straight for the helicopter. The bullets bounced off the hull harmlessly, but that didn't stop the pilot from keeping his finger firmly on the trigger. The blue light around the ship reappeared, and it went into ramming mode. Just before impact, the helicopter fired a set of missiles which were too close for the alien ship to dodge. There was a horrific explosion in the air, with debris flying everywhere. For a brief moment, Cole and Dario believed the chopper pilot sacrificed himself to take down a tough enemy. But their hearts sank as the alien craft came out on the other side, still airborne. Jesus, man, Dario breathed, shaking his head. Two missiles point-blank and that thing is still in the air? Pilot didn't die in vain, though, Colt said. The sergeant blinked at him. How do you figure? he asked. We know the bullets and missiles don't work on their ships, the captain replied. Dario grunted. Not the most useful information to have, he said dryly. I'd rather have it on the ground than in the air, Colt said. The sergeant sighed. Point taken, he conceded, then perked up a bit. Maybe they're not indestructible after all, he pointed towards the lone ship. It started to smoke from its right wing and headed back towards the formation, but didn't quite make it. It didn't explode, but was forced to land in the middle of the interstate. So, all we have to do is hit it point blank with a couple of missiles and a couple of helicopters, Colt said, a note of sarcasm in his tone. Sounds easy enough. Come on, let's get moving. The duo got back down the hill and into the truck, driving away from the formation and getting far off the interstate as well, not wanting to risk being spotted. So, how are we getting across? Dario asked. Next exit's about ten miles up, Colt explained, hoping that's enough distance between the collection site, or whatever the hell that was. The sergeant pursed his lips. And if it's not? he asked. Let's just hope that it is, Colt shot back because the terrain gets a lot harder shortly thereafter. Dario nodded from the passenger seat, not wanting to push the issue further. It wouldn't do any good anyway. They drove in silence for a few miles, both of them needing time to process a bit of what they'd been witness to. It wasn't easy to come to terms with an alien invasion, and a short bumpy ride wasn't going to be near enough time to accomplish that task. 
but the break was very welcome. They looked over towards the interstate, seeing a couple of cars driving away, going somewhat slowly to avoid the pedestrians on the shoulder. Looks like some people are managing to escape, Dario murmured. Let's just hope that they don't bring those things along with them, Colt said. At least until we cross. After a brief moment of silence, Dario stiffened. My God, he breathed. What is it? Colt asked, trying to keep his focus on the road. Where are those people going to? The sergeant wondered. There are some small communities out in the boonies, Colt said, shoulders relaxing. And what do they do next week when the food runs out? Dario continued. The captain shook his head as several ships flew over them at an accelerated pace. I think they'll feel lucky that they lasted that long, he muttered as he glanced up at the sky. Dario gripped his gun tightly, watching for the ships to turn around. Much to their surprise, they didn't. The vessels continued to speed off into the distance, vanishing on the horizon. What the hell is north of here that would light a fire under them like that? The sergeant asked. Flagstaff? Not unless they have a hard-on for bombing retirees, Colt replied, shaking his head. Maybe Nellis? That's a haul, isn't it? Dario asked. Three hundred miles, give or take, the captain said. But with as fast as they're going... Dario drummed his fingers on his gun barrel. Plus, those Air Force boys are probably itching to take the fight to them, he mused. Those things could be on an intercept course. For our boys' sake, I hope their ejector seats are in working order, Colt said. Both of them took a moment, thinking of the poor pilots who were about to be demolished by vastly superior alien technology, and the frustration setting in on them not being able to do anything about it. At least, not yet. Colt pushed the pedal down a little bit further, the ride getting a bit bumpier. Both of them knew that with every passing moment, more of their comrades' lives were being lost, fighting a futile fight. They knew the information they carried probably wouldn't win them the fight, but at least it would give people on the ground a chance. They continued to drive for several more minutes, Dario keeping his head on a swivel, looking in all directions for any ships. As they went, he kept looking back in the same direction, off the passenger side bumper, far into the distance. Colt noticed and cocked a brow. If you see something, say something, he urged. I'm not sure, Dario replied. Not sure about what, the captain demanded. There's a ship hovering in the distance, Dario replied. Maybe a mile out? Is it following us? Colt asked, keeping his eyes firmly straight ahead. It's hard to tell, the sergeant admitted. I think it's looking at us, or it could just be a scout ship looking for more of our aircrafts. Is that the only potential threat? Colt asked. Dario nodded hesitantly. Yeah, every other ship I've spotted has been flying off away from us, he said. Keep your eyes glued to that ship, the captain instructed. See if you can tell if it's locked onto us, or if it's just sightseeing. Dario nodded again and kept his gaze towards the back of the truck. Colt continued to drive over the rough terrain and chanced a glance over towards the interstate, seeing that the cars that were fleeing alongside him had all but vanished. He wasn't sure if they pulled off of the road or got caught up in traffic, or worse, were intercepted by invaders. Regardless of the reason, they were now gone. Another few minutes passed as they got closer to the road that cut over the interstate and led towards the hilly region where Colt's cabin was. Before they got to the road, he slowed down. So, how's our shadow? he asked. Still on us, Dario replied. Colt took a deep breath. Same distance from us? he asked. The sergeant nodded. Looks that way, he said. Okay, we have to assume it has eyes for us, Colt said. Dario didn't look away from the ship as he asked, What's the play? Turn off for the cabin is eight miles away, then another two after that, the captain explained. Once we hit that turn off, the terrain gets real tricky. Dirt road all the way up, hills on either side. Dario nodded slowly. Guessing hoping for a dense forest is out of the question, he muttered. Only cover you're going to get is with the ravines and rock faces, Colt confirmed. Might get lucky with some plant growth, but I wouldn't count on it. The sergeant took a deep breath. 
Okay, I know what we're doing, he said firmly. Assuming it's dropping off one of their hunters instead of just bombing us out of existence. Yep, we're getting to the cabin and going to take it out there, Colt replied. Dario shook his head. No, he said. I'm going to keep it busy while you get to the cabin. The captain stiffened. We got an arsenal and know how to fight him, he shot back. We'll take it out together. And risk the radio equipment, Dario argued. I don't think so. Colt jutted out his chin. We'll be. We're not going to take the chance, the sergeant cut in sharply, turning to him. For all we know, we're the only ones with this information. It needs to get out. His friend's brow furrowed, worry clear on his face. Yeah, yeah, Dario said, trying to sound flippant. I'm worried about me too. But look, this is the play and you know it is. The captain didn't argue, staying in silence as he thought it over, still heading towards the main road towards the turnoff. Finally, he sighed and gave a terse nod. Okay, we're going to get a little ways up on the turnoff before I drop you off, he instructed. There's a ridge about a quarter mile off the main road that overlooks the entrance. If that ship does drop as a guest, you'll have a good vantage point from there. As soon as I have eyes on it, I'll make sure he's only looking in my direction, Dario promised. Do your best not to engage directly, Colt warned. The sergeant forced a smile. Not an issue, Cap, he drawled. Not looking forward to tangling these things again, so delaying the inevitable is at the top of my list. Okay, Colt said, gripping the steering wheel tighter. Lead it up the road towards the cabin. There's an ATV trail that branches off of it about a half mile up. Lots of nooks and crannies to play hide and seek in. When I get the message out, I'll come your way to take this bitch out. Fifteen minutes give you enough time? Dario asked. Colt nodded. Should, he confirmed. The sergeant raised his gun. Okay. I'll start squeezing off rounds after fifteen minutes so you can track us down, he said. His friend sighed. Okay, I guess that qualifies as a plan, he quipped, and they shared a chuckle, unable to do anything else in this situation they'd find themselves in. After another few moments, they reached the turnoff. Colt turned the wheel hard, speeding up the dirt road, the truck fishtailing a bit as they went. He got to the top of the ridge, stopping so that Dario could get out. The sergeant hopped out, taking his assault rifle and a shotgun with him, slinging the latter over his shoulder. Fifteen minutes, and you come find me, he said. Don't do anything stupid, Colt said, an affectionate smile on his face. That ship sailed when I boarded the plane this morning, Dario quipped. They shared one last chuckle as the sergeant slammed the door shut, and he watched his friends speed up the dirt road before looking down at his watch and setting a fifteen-minute timer. He readied his assault rifle, taking up position beside a large rock at the top of the ridge, looking down at the road they'd just come up from. An engine roared in the distance, and he looked up. Their shadow had sped up considerably, closing the distance in a matter of seconds. Dario checked his weapon, nodding to himself. All right, he said under his breath. It's showtime. Chapter 3 Dario knelt down behind cover doing everything he could to calm himself down. The absurdity of the day ran through his head. Few hours ago, the biggest problem you had was finding airport parking, he chattered to himself, the words tumbling out with a manic nervousness. Now you're preparing to ambush an alien that probably isn't going to like it. He let out a dark horror laugh, shaking his head and doing his best to just focus on the moment. The roaring sound of the alien aircraft's engine made that task a little easier. Something about the impending sense of doom kept his attention directed. He looked over at the alien ship within a few hundred yards of the position. It stopped just short of him, hovering above at an angle, almost like it was checking him out. He knew that the cover he had would barely work for a ground target, let alone for an aerial one. Dario did the only thing he could do, which was look directly up at the vessel and flip it off. Well, come on already, he barked to himself, in a tone that conceded he was about to be vaporized by one of those blue plasma bolts. Maybe it would buy Colt enough time, 
hopefully. The ship hovered for another few moments before moving over to the road, low in the sky. A moment later, a thin alien warrior materialized on the ground. It stood there for a beat, staring straight towards the sergeant. Then the ship flew off. Dario was confused, staring down at the creature as it did the same to him, no more than a quarter mile away. Ah, oh, hell. Don't tell me you're here to hunt us for sport, the sergeant huffed. Although, given the number of animal heads I have on my walls, it would be calmer if you were. He continued to stare down the alien, which was almost waiting for him to make the first move. The sergeant, however, was content just standing there, letting the clock run. Because it didn't matter if he was fighting it or not. The only thing that mattered was Colt having the time to do what needed to be done. Finally, after nearly a full minute of stare-downs, the alien began to move. It took a single step, prompting Dario to quickly raise his weapon and fire a single shot towards it. The aim was true, striking the creature in the chest. Once again, the prismatic shield activated, not slowing the alien down. Dario fired again, hitting the target, but the alien didn't break stride, strolling towards him without a care in the world. Well, let's get this show on the road, Dario muttered, and broke from his position, moving with purpose back towards the direction of the cabin, and making it to the main road before glancing back. The creature was within a hundred yards of him, and as soon as they made eye contact, it began to sprint. The sudden movement change startled the sergeant. Oh, hell! he gasped, and turned tail, running hard, occasionally glancing back over his shoulder to keep tabs on the distance. The alien was considerably taller than Dario, nearly seven feet from foot to head, dressed in the similar armor as the one they'd felled earlier. The long legs allowed the creature to close the gap way quicker than Dario would have liked. As the creature got close, it didn't deploy its plasma sword, which confused him. He continued to run up the road, spotting the ATV trail about a hundred yards up to his right. He glanced over his shoulder, knowing that there wasn't a chance in hell he was going to reach it before the alien caught up to him. Dario listened carefully for the heavy footsteps of the alien as it got within a few yards of him. As it got incredibly close, Dario came to an abrupt stop, sliding down to the ground and getting as low as possible. The alien didn't anticipate this, causing it to run right by the soldier. It attempted to reach out and grab him as he flew by, but Dario was low enough that he avoided the grip of the creature. As soon as it was by him, he popped up and opened fire with his rifle, sending several rounds into its back. This didn't damage it at all, only managing to anger the alien, which turned the upper part of its body to glare at him. Even though he couldn't see the creature's eyes, only the blue glow in the eye holes, he could sense the anger emanating from it. You may be bigger and stronger, Dario declared, but you're not going to get me that easy. The alien let out a screech before turning and lunging at him, attempting a vicious punch. Dario grabbed the barrel of his rifle with his offhand and used it like a bludgeon. He used it to deflect the punch away from him while taking a couple of steps back. The alien continued its flurry of fists, with Dario managing to avoid all of them. Finally, the creature had had enough, throwing a punch but stopping it halfway so it could grab the rifle. In a single motion, the alien ripped the gun out of the sergeant's hands, pulling him closer to it. It lowered its shoulder and rammed it straight into Dario's chest, the blunt force trauma knocking the wind out of him and sending him careening off of the road. There was a slight incline just off of the main road, filled with some rocks and small underbrush. He slid down the hill, doing his best not to tumble head over feet. He managed to control the descent, getting to his feet and scampering away, moving towards the ATV trail. Rather than pursue directly, the alien moved along the road. To make sure that it kept its focus on him, Dario drew his sidearm, firing a couple shots towards him, hitting the shield. The creature continued stalking him, yeah, that's right, the sergeant taunted. I'm who you want. Come and get me. There was another slight incline that led up to the ATV trail, and Dario scrambled to get up it. 
He pulled his body up, taking a knee to gather himself as the alien continued to pursue, stopping about twenty yards away. They locked eyes again, and the sergeant smirked. I am a little tougher than you thought, huh? He drawled. The alien cocked its head to the side, as if it were trying to understand what he was saying. Dario was a little perplexed by this, but he didn't have the time to really think about it because the creature darted forward. It seemed as if it were trying to grab him rather than punch him, but Dario was faster. After several failed attempts, negated by the sergeant's swiftness in darting out of the way, it finally got a hold on him. A metallic hand clamped down on Dario's collarbone, causing him to dip a little in pain. The creature could have easily crushed his bones, but didn't, only applying enough pressure to keep him in place. The sergeant struggled to break free, but it was to no avail. They locked eyes again, and he had that sense again, this time of appreciation, like the alien admired his fight. Dario stared back, not blinking, his lip curling a little. I don't know what your plan is, he said, and sneakily pulled a knife from his boot, but you'd better hope it's a quick one. He jammed the blade into the alien's midsection, triggering the prismatic shield. The ripples from the tip of the blade echoed out from the point of contact, and Dario began counting. Two, three, he muttered. The alien used its free hand to reach into a holster, pulling out one of the syringe guns. Oh no you don't, Dario barked using his other hand to smack at the creature's gun hand. It wasn't enough to cause much of a delay, but he only needed one more second. Five! The shield gave out and his blade penetrated the shield as it collapsed. Before he could hit the armor, however, the alien shoved him back, leaping out of the way. The sergeant quickly slung his shotgun around, taking aim at center mass and firing. The slug hit the alien directly in the chest, and the shield activated but not fully. While it stopped the slug, the impact was enough to send the alien stumbling back. It let out a screech as if it were in pain, clutching at its chest. It looked at him almost in shock. Dario huffed, frustrated that it wasn't a kill shot. Damn it, that thing comes back quick, he muttered. The creature let out a scream and ran full tilt towards him. Oh, hell, the sergeant cried turning to bolt down the ATV trail. It wove around a ridge, and he quickly found it was even more treacherous than that. As he ran around the corner, he nearly slid off, down a twenty-foot incline towards a ravine area filled with numerous pathways through the rock face. He looked back, and the alien was gaining speed, focused in on him. He knew this was his only chance to get the thing off of his trail so he could buy a few minutes. He looked down, nodding to himself, before turning around and facing the charging creature. Just for effect, he drew out his shotgun, racking another shell into the chamber and waiting for the creature to get close. He raised his gun up as the alien raised its hand up. But rather than fire, Dario dove out of the way. Just as he had hoped, the alien had picked up too much speed on its approach and was unable to stop at the edge that snuck up on it. The alien began sliding down the embankment to the ravine, but wasn't beaten. It quickly drew out its plasma blaster, firing a shot up towards him as it tumbled down to the rocks below. The shot didn't hit, but it impacted the rock wall behind him with enough force to dislodge several chunks. Dario looked back at the wall as part of it began to collapse. He did the only thing he could do, which was tear along the path. He was several steps away from where the plasma bolt had done its damage, but it wasn't far enough. One of the medium-sized rocks hit the back of his foot, tripping him up and causing him to slide from the ATV trail. He grasped at anything to grab onto, but there was nothing available other than air. He slid down the incline into the ravine below. As he fell, he looked around for the alien, but he couldn't find it. He managed to control his descent enough that he had a soft landing at the bottom, his shotgun rattling to the ground just a few yards from him. Dario got up and sprinted over to it, picking it up and planting his back firmly against one of the ravine walls. He listened carefully for the creature, hearing footsteps in the distance that echoed off of the rocks. He took a deep breath, looking down at his watch, 
finding that there was still more than ten minutes on the timer. Okay, Colt, you got your time, he thought. Just don't be late. He moved away from the rock he was planted against, moving quickly but quietly along the ravine, hoping he could keep his position concealed long enough for his reinforcements to arrive. Chapter 4 Colt raced up to the cabin, relieved to see it was still standing, along with the exterior cables that provided the ham radio with a boosted signal. He hopped out of the truck, grabbing a shotgun to keep it at the ready. He knew that it wasn't going to do much good if one of those creatures was waiting for him, but old habits died hard. Plus, if he was going down, he wanted to at least irritate the thing taking him out. He rushed up to the door, looking through the window and not finding any movement, nor anything disturbed. He rushed inside, bolting the door behind him. The cabin was a single large room of about 400 square feet. There was a small bedroom area in the far corner, and on the opposite side was a tiny bathroom area that was enclosed. The rest of the space was pretty open, with a couch and a TV against the wall and a wood-burning stove in the middle of the room. On the opposite side of the TV stood the ham radio setup. Since his forced retirement, Colt had taken up the hobby of speaking with people in some of the countries he had been stationed in. He figured he had taken the time to learn their languages, and it would be a shame to let those skills deteriorate. Also, he needed something to do. He powered up the radio, and as the lights came on he hit the local scan button, which started scanning the region for any activity. Come on. Somebody's got to be active, he murmured, watching as it continued, finally stopping on a channel. A terrified voice immediately crackled through, speaking so quickly that they were difficult to understand. The only words he could make out were, God, help me, and variations of that. It only lasted a moment before a scream and a loud explosion, then silence. Colt shook his head, hitting the scan button again. The radio continued to go for several moments before locking on to an open signal. He caught the tail end of the message, just part of a word, before the line shut off. He grabbed the receiver, hitting the button to go live. Hello? Hello? He barked. Can you hear me? The line came back, and the man on the other end sounded far younger than him. It's about damn time, the other man cried. Where are my reinforcements? The captain sighed. Kid, I'll level with you. I have no clue, he said. Kid? The other man snapped. Who the hell is this? Captain Colt Hodges, he introduced. Retired. Or at least I was retired until an hour or so ago. The man on the other end sobered, asking, Captain Hodges, what the hell is going on? I don't know, Colt admitted, but it's nothing good. Thanks, Captain, the other soldier drawled, sarcasm clear in his tone. You're a big help. I think I might be, Colt said firmly. What's your name and situation? Name's Private Jenkins, sir, the soldier replied. Most of my men have been wiped out by these... these... whatever the hell these things are. The captain nodded slowly. Let me guess, your guns have been useless against them, he asked. Yeah, Jenkins replied. Guns, explosives, hell, one of my guys grabbed an SUV and tried to roll over one of those things. Nothing worked. That's because they have an active protective shield, Colt explained. The private scoffed. You don't say, he drawled, the sarcasm back in full force. The captain chuckled. Pretty mouthy for a private, he said. I'll make you a deal, sir, Jenkins replied. You come down here to the front lines and I'll gladly let you court-martial me. Okay, where are you at? Colt asked. There's only three of us from my platoon left, the private explained. We're holed up with some civilians in a sporting goods store on the second floor of the Sun Valley Mall. Sun Valley Mall, Colt trailed off, thinking. Northwest side of town? he asked. Yeah, north of the 101 loop, Jenkins confirmed. The captain took a deep breath. Are you under attack right now? he asked. No, not at the moment, Jenkins replied. But we can hear explosions in the distance, so it's only a matter of time. Colt nodded. Any means of escape? he asked. Our transports are busted the private explained. Not sure what those blue things are, but they pack one hell of a punch. The captain rubbed his forehead. 
How many you got with you? he asked. There's eight of us in the store at the moment, Jenkins replied. Okay, I'm going to need you to hang tight, Colt said. I'm going to be headed your way real soon. The private laughed. I appreciate your sentiment, Captain, but I was just kidding about the court-martial offer, he said. Too late, Colt quipped. Jenkins' voice grew somber and lower, as if he were shielding himself from his companions. Captain, we can't fight these things, he said. Only thing you're going to accomplish by coming down here is getting yourself killed with us. You're wrong on both counts, Colt said firmly. There is a way to fight these things. There was a beat of silence. What are you talking about? Jenkins finally asked. The captain took a deep breath. Their shield has a weakness, he said. It can only stay on for roughly five seconds at a time. But we hit one of those things with a sustained barrage of bullets, the private shot back. I know, but even if there is a microsecond without contact, it resets, Colt explained. You have to apply constant contact to drain it. Using what exactly? Jenkins asked, sounding skeptical. I got through mine with the chainsaw, Colt said. There was another brief moment of silence before the private came back. I'm afraid I left my chainsaw back at the shop, he said dryly. A knife can work too, the captain added. Now there's something I can get my hands on, Jenkins said. So once we pop the shield, then what? You got a shotgun? Colt asked. Yeah, the private replied. Problem solved, Colt quipped. Jenkins sighed. Okay, we hold out as long as we can, he said, sounding suddenly exhausted. You in contact with anybody else? The captain asked. There was a short pause. Sort of, the private finally said. Command has been completely wiped out, but one of the civilians got their hands on a police radio, so we're in touch with their dispatch. Okay, start getting the information out about their shields to everybody you can, Colt instructed. Will do, Captain, Jenkins replied firmly. Colt raised a hand. Oh, and you got a local frequency? He asked. Channel 36, the private replied. Okay, I'll radio when we're near, Colt said. Over and out. The line went dead, and the captain thought for a moment. He opened up a drawer and pulled out a weathered spiral notebook, flipping through the pages. Looking at the top right corner for the headings, most of which read off countries, the rest of the page was filled with people and their frequencies, and he stopped at USA Emergency Frequencies. He scrolled down the list, finally planting his finger on one that read, Smitty. Okay, you old bastard. You better be manning the comms, he muttered, and flipped some switches on the radio, dialing up the right number. The light clicked on that he was on the correct frequency, but there was nothing on the other end. Come on, Smitty, he urged under his breath. You spent your whole life waiting for shit to hit the fan. Don't tell me you're sleeping in. He did the only thing he could do, which was plant himself in his chair and stare at the comm, making sure it was still active. He glanced down at his watch, only five minutes before he had to break away to go help Dario. Come on, Smitty. Every second counts, he urged. After several tense moments, the line came on. The voice coming through the other end was a familiar old drawl, gruff with a hint of anger and disdain for humanity. Who in the hell is this? Smitty barked. Don't you know this is a private line? Of course I know it's a private line, Colt shot back. How else do you think I got the frequency? A short pause. Wait, Colt? Smitty asked. The captain rolled his eyes. Who else would be calling up your cranky ass on a day like this? he asked. I got forty people from every corner of the globe shouting at each other on three different lines, Smitty explained. You're lucky I even saw this one clicked on. This is my civilian line, so not exactly high up on the food chain today. Colt took a deep breath. Well, I appreciate you taking the time for me, he said. Oh no, I was just coming over here to tell you to fuck off, Smitty replied brightly. But since it's you... I'll add a please to that. I got information, the captain said quickly. Let me guess. Aliens are invading, Smitty drawled. Yeah, I know. And they're whooping everybody's ass. And we're trying to figure out a game plan so we're not wiped out on day one. So unless you have a silver bullet against them, I ain't got the time. Colt leaned forward. I know how to take down their shields, he said. 
There was a long pause. Well, hot diggity damn, Smitty barked. Why the hell didn't you lead with that? Sorry, it's been a long day, Colt said with a sigh. Okay, well, spill it, Smitty demanded. The captain took a deep breath. The shield only has a five-second charge, he explained. If you can keep it activated continuously, it'll fail and give you a chance for a headshot. If it flickers off, it recharges. Not the answer I was hoping for, the old man admitted. But that's more than anybody else has got. Colt flexed the fingers of his free hand nervously. How bad is it out there? he asked. It's worldwide, man, Smitty replied. Everybody I know is dealing with these things. But it seems like we're getting the business harder than anybody else at the moment. The captain cocked his head. Maybe they know we're the biggest kids on the block, he asked. That's the working theory, given that the first thing they did was nuke DC, Smitty replied. DC's gone? Colt breathed, his blood running cold. Vaporized, Smitty replied. We are officially without a chain of command, my man. The captain sat back in his chair, speechless for a moment. He'd known the situation was bad, but losing everybody at the top was a near-fatal blow from which they might not be able to recover from. Jesus, he muttered. Tell me about it, Smitty agreed. Colt took a deep breath and leaned forward. So, who's in charge? he asked. At the moment, the old man asked. A few of the smaller nations still have functioning governments. However, I'm pretty sure you and I have more guns than they do, so who really gives a shit what they think? I haven't heard much of anything out of China, which isn't surprising. Europe seems to be doing about as well as we are, which ain't very good. So yeah, man, at the moment, it's kind of everybody for themselves. The captain rubbed his forehead. Not really the answer I was hoping for, he admitted. Yeah, well, sorry to disappoint, Smitty quipped, but that's kind of the reality of the day at the moment. Colt chewed over his thoughts in silence for a moment. He thought back to his time deployed overseas, the fights he'd had to fight. Suddenly something clicked in his brain. I got it, he said. Got what? Smitty asked. I know who's in charge, Colt said firmly. We are. Man, I can't even get my cat to do what I want, and you want me to be in charge of the military? The old man asked. No, you don't have to be in charge of the military, the captain replied, because the military's gone. We've lost this war. Hey, that's the spirit, Smitty scoffed. You want me to run out with the white flag, or you want the honors? Colt shook his head. The war is over, he said firmly. The post-war has just begun, though. The old man thought about it for a moment before barking a dry laugh. So, you want to skip the war part and go straight for the insurgency, huh? He drawled. We're already on the deck, and it's an eight count, Colt said. If we keep going in a stand-up fight, they're going to wipe us out before we can even get the word out on how to take them down. So we minimize our losses, retreat someplace, let them settle in. Then we start taking the fight to them once we're ready. Smitty paused. Not the craziest idea I've heard, he finally admitted. I can tell you from first-hand experience, it worked exceedingly well against us when we were the overwhelming powerful invading force, Colt said. Okay, I'll start getting the word out to pull back, Smitty agreed. Hopefully we can get enough manpower to mount a resistance. We're doing the same here, shortly, Colt replied. Oh, wait, 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 the old man gushed. Where the hell are you? North of Phoenix, the captain replied, brow furrowing. Why? Hot damn, Smitty said. I know where you're going to lay low. Colt leaned forward. I'm all ears, he said. You know where Bullhead City is? Smitty asked. The captain paused, shaking his head slowly. Can't say that I do, he admitted. Good, that's kind of the whole point, the old man continued, excitement in his tone. It's north of the I-40 at the Arizona-Nevada state line. Colt waited, but he didn't say any more. So, you want me to go to Bullhead City? He prompted. For starters, yeah, Smitty replied. Once you get there, you start hauling ass due north. Can't be more than ten, fifteen miles outside the city. The captain nodded slowly. And what am I going to be looking for? He asked. A ghost town, the old man said simply. 
Colt waited, thinking for a beat. You're sending me to a ghost town? He finally asked. Yep, just off the river there. That's where you'll find home, Smitty said. Might not look like much, but we've done some upgrades over the years. This piqued the captain's interest, and he raised an eyebrow. You did upgrades? He asked. Yeah, you've talked to me enough times over the years to know I'm paranoid as hell, Smitty drawled. Lucky for you, I got a couple buddies in some of those alphabet agencies who are just as paranoid as I am. So, you know, they kind of appropriated some money out of a slush fund. We bought some ghost towns around the country, built some hardcore bunkers underneath of it, and turned them into well-stocked hardened facilities. Excitement and hope rose in Colt's chest. How well stocked? he asked. Enough guns and explosives to outfit a 200-man fighting force, and enough food to feed them for five years, Smitty said, unable to keep the pride out of his tone. Colt blinked at the radio in shock. Jesus Christ, he breathed. What the hell brought that on? Well, we figured one of these days the Russians or Chinese were going to take a swing at us, Smitty said. We just wanted to be ready. Did you boys stay up late getting drunk and watching Red Dawn? The captain teased. There was a long pause. Well, whatever the reason, it's there, Smitty finally said a little defensively. And you need to haul ass up to it. Colt nodded. What do I do when I get there? He asked. I'm assuming you didn't leave it unlocked. Under the saloon there's a cellar door with a keypad, the old man explained. 1492 is the code. Okay, you got more of these? The captain asked. Half a dozen or so in the western part of the country, Smitty confirmed. Colt took a deep breath. Okay, you start spreading the word, and I'll let you know when we're there, he said firmly. I assume there's comm equipment there? Yep, full setup that was tied into D.C., but I'll make the necessary adjustments so it comes to me. Smitty replied. Copy that, Colt said with an air of finality. Be safe out there, Smitty said, in a rare moment of seriousness. The captain smiled at the radio. Eh, you know me, he said. Yep, that's why I just reminded you to be safe, the old man quipped. Colt chuckled as he flicked the radio off. As if on cue, a gunshot went off in the distance, and he leapt from his chair running over to grab his gear so he could go help Dario. He paused at the door, thinking for a moment, a smirk curling his lips at a fresh idea in his head. That could work, he murmured, and walked over to a chest on the floor beneath his gun rack. He flung it open, looking inside and nodding to himself. That thing's not going to know what hit it. Chapter 5 Dario ran along the ravine, firing another shot into the air in the hopes that Colt would hear it. As he ran, heavy footsteps from the large alien warrior echoed behind him. During the entire encounter, the creature hadn't deployed its plasma sword, nor fired anything other than the lone shot that brought the sergeant down to the bottom of the ravine. Speculation swirled in Dario's mind, as he was unsure of what to make of that. Of course, those thoughts were quickly blasted out of his head as he came around a rock to find himself at a dead end. Damn it, he muttered, and looked frantically around the area. The wall in front of him was easily fifteen feet high, and mostly sheer, so climbing was completely out of the question. The area from side to side was about ten feet, so he had a little bit of room to maneuver, but not a lot. He checked his handgun, finding half a mag left and one spare. He knew it wouldn't do much more than irritate his attacker, but it was better than nothing. He still had his shotgun slung over his shoulder, but that was a last resort in case they could get the shield down. Accepting his fate, Dario came out from behind the rock. The alien was standing in the open, about ten yards away, just staring at him. All right, you wanted me. Well, here I am, the sergeant bellowed. The alien screeched and darted forward, Dario doing the same, his handgun at the ready. When they made it within striking distance of each other, he ducked down and fell into a half-slide, grabbing onto the alien's leg as he went by. Much to his surprise, the shield didn't activate as he grabbed onto its ankle. With a firm grip, he planted his feet and pulled as hard as he could. 
The combination of his weight and momentum was enough to yank the leg backwards, causing the creature to go into a half-split, tumbling towards the ground. Dario raised his handgun and fired while holding on with one arm, and the shield only activated in the area where the bullet impacted, leaving a small area around his hand where it didn't. He aimed his handgun very close to his hand, and the alien swung its arm backwards, forcing Dario to let go and scamper back on his hands and feet, rather than firing. Before he could get back to his feet, the alien swung its back leg around to the front like an 80s breakdancer, using the momentum to pull itself up into a handstand, pushing off of the ground several feet into the air. The creature flew over Dario, landing on top of a six-foot-tall rock just behind him. Rather than staying perched up there, it pushed off, lunging headfirst towards Dario, who rolled out of the way, narrowly avoiding being crushed by the warrior. Before he could get back up, the alien recovered from the attack, darting over and grabbing him by the back of the shirt and delivering a vicious kidney punch, sending Dario to the ground in a heap. He crawled along the ground, grunting in pain, trying to get away from the alien. He finally rolled over on his back, shooting the last half-dozen shots from his handgun before it clicked empty. The creature just stood there, staring at him as he pulled the trigger several more times, despite the fact there were no more bullets. Defeated, Dario shook his head and tossed his gun to the side. Well, gave it my best shot, he huffed. Just do it already. The alien pulled out its syringe gun, brandishing it for a moment before taking a step towards him. Before it could inject the soldier, several shots went off rapidly from behind it, lighting up the shield in a spectacular array of blue light. The creature stopped, letting out an agitated grunt as it turned around to find Colt standing behind a rock a good twenty yards away. He had an assault rifle at the ready, squeezing off round after round. Finally, he emptied the entire magazine, popping it out and slamming another one in. Sorry I'm late to the party, the captain drawled. Had some things to attend to. The alien let out a screech, glancing back down at Dario, who was crawling away. The creature holstered the syringe gun and sprang towards Colt, who didn't move from his position. As he got closer, Colt stood his ground, squeezing off a few more shots in the process, which, of course, did nothing. When the alien got within ten yards, it was moving incredibly fast, and pulled its right arm back like it was going to deliver a haymaker. The captain waited another second before tossing his rifle to the side and reaching back behind the rock. He yanked up with his arm as hard as he could, pulling out a giant bear trap that was rigged and ready to go. He grabbed the top and bottom with both hands and shoved it in the direction of the alien's fist. Much to his surprise, he connected with the counter. The alien's fist struck the release on the bear trap, sending the sharp spikes into his arm, triggering the shield. Gotcha, Colt quipped, and held the trap as hard as he could, struggling with the flailing alien warrior trying to pull itself free. The grip on the bear trap was forceful, even pushing the digital shield down onto the alien's arm, preventing it from being able to break free. As the seconds ticked away, the alien swung its free arm towards Colt, who ducked underneath it. With only a couple seconds remaining, the creature went into panic mode, activating the blue plasma sword. Oh no you don't, the captain screamed, and let go of the bear trap, grabbing the sword hand by the wrist, just above where the blue plasma was coming from. He yanked with everything he had to keep the sword away from the trap. The shield finally failed, the trap digging into its arms, sending a splatter of blue blood against the rocks. The alien shrieked in pain as it looked down at the human, who knew he was in trouble. Before it could do anything, a shotgun slug ripped through the back of its head, taking off a significant portion of its skull. The alien stood upright for a brief moment before losing all tension and crumpling to the ground. Colt let go and backed up as it collapsed, the plasma sword hitting the alien on the other arm and lopping it off just above the elbow, freeing it from the bear trap. The captain stood there for a moment, breathing in heavy relief, before looking over to Dario, who was on one knee, still holding the shotgun. Once it hit him that the fight was finally over, he dropped the gun and sat down hard on the ground. Whoa, easy now, Colt said, rushing over to him. You okay? Yeah, the sergeant huffed. He just beat me like a red-headed stepchild. 
Colt curled a hand under Dario's arm and helped him up. His friend winced from the pain sparking through his body, and the captain's brow furrowed in concern. I'm good, I'm good, Dario assured him, waving him off. Just maybe don't move too fast for a few minutes. It's okay, man. Take your time, Colt said. Catch your breath. The two of them slowly walked over towards the alien on the ground. Its sword had dissipated, leaving only the mangled corpse behind. The arm with the bear trap was cleanly severed by the plasma, as blue blood poured out from what was left of the creature's head. Dario stared at it for a moment, before fixating on the severed arm. A bear trap? he asked, shaking his head. Really? It's smart, right? Colt asked with a grin. Worked like a charm. The sergeant rubbed his forehead. That's not my issue, Cap, he said. Where the hell did you get a bear trap from? Colt wrinkled his nose sheepishly. There are bears in Arizona, he protested. And you hunt them with bear traps? Dario asked dryly. The captain hummed and hawed for a moment before chuckling and shaking his head. Okay, fine, he huffed, crossing his arms. About six months back, I had a break-in at the cabin. Whoever it was came in through the window, and since I don't want to put bars on it, I decided on an unorthodox approach. Dario let out a deep sigh. You used bear traps as home security? he asked. Colt shrugged. It was cheaper than putting in a security system, he said. Well, did it work? the sergeant asked. I mean, Colt trailed off, cocking his head. I'm glad I went for the stainless option. Both men laughed, dissolving much tension in their bodies, something that was much needed after the day they'd had. So he kicked your ass, huh? Colt said, motioning to the corpse. Looks like you held up okay, no burns or limbs missing. It was the weirdest thing, Dario admitted, shaking his head as he stared down at the dead creature. I don't think it was trying to kill me. The captain blinked at him in confusion. What makes you say that? he asked. Dario looked over the corpse, finally finding the syringe weapon. Before he could grab it, Colt put a hand on his shoulder to make him stop, but the sergeant motioned for him to stand back. Don't worry, I'm not pulling the trigger on anything, he said, and pulled out the gun, holding the base of the pistol-style grip with two fingers. Instead of a magazine filled with bullets, there was a long metal tube extending away from it, with the syringe on the other end. The tube was full of small metallic objects. What the hell is that? Colt breathed, leaning in to stare at it. Not sure, Dario replied, and walked over to a rock, lowering the gun down onto the flat surface. He took out his knife, positioning the tip of it just by the trigger, and taking a long, deep breath before hitting it with the blade. One of the metallic bits popped out, expanding out in size to no larger than a small coin. As it hit the rock, there was a brief, brilliant flash of blue before it petered out. That was... unexpected, Colt murmured. Either this thing microwaves you from the inside out, or it's non-lethal, Dario mused. We should take it with us then, the captain suggested. Whatever it is, might be over our heads, but if we're going to win this fight, having information is going to be key. Dario inclined his head towards the corpse. What about the headless horseman here? he asked. Colt turned back to the alien rubbing his chin in thought. Time wasn't on their side, that much was clear. Let's field strip as much as we can get off of him, he said. Technology, weapons, anything that might help us get an upper hand on these things. The sergeant nodded. You got it, he said. Dario leaned down, knife in hand, studying the body for several moments before stabbing down at an exposed piece of flesh in the hopes of getting underneath the metal bits. As he did that, the shield activated, causing both men to jump back, fearful that the alien wasn't quite dead. They stood there, tense and ready to fight, but the creature didn't move. Finally, they regained their breaths and walked back over to it. Colt knelt down, reaching out for Dario's knife, and the sergeant handed it over. Colt gave the corpse a few jabs for good measure, each time powering on the shield. You're not going to like what I'm about to say, the captain said with a sigh. Dario groaned. Aw, oh, hell, Cap, he whined. Yep, Colt said firmly. We gotta get this thing back to the cabin. 
What in the world are we going to do with this thing? Dario asked, throwing up his hands. Hold it in a safe place until we find somebody who can make heads or tails of it, the captain said. Dario sighed. And where are we going to do that? he asked. Colt got to his feet. Maybe we'll get lucky on our trip to the Phoenix suburbs, he quipped. Wait, what? the sergeant asked, shaking his head in confusion. Come on, let's start dragging this bad boy back, Colt said, rubbing his palms together. I'll fill you in. Dario nodded, sighed again, and the two of them each picked a limb of the deceased alien and started dragging it. It was a long hike out of the ravine, and they were just getting started. Chapter 6 The duo finally made it into the cabin, dragging the large alien inside. When they cleared the threshold of the door, Colt secured it as Dario collapsed onto the ground, back to the floor, breathing heavily. Can we go ahead and wave the white flag now? He huffed, his arm weakly slapping his own chest. I never want to do that again. You'll get no argument from me on that, Colt agreed hoarsely, shuffling over to a small refrigerator in the corner, opening it up and pulling out a couple bottles of water. He cracked one open, tossing the other to his friend. Dario groaned as he pulled himself up into a sitting position, and the two sat there in sweaty misery for several moments while they rehydrated. Finally, the sergeant took a deep breath. So, now what? he asked. Just hang tight. I gotta get on the line, Colt said. Dario half-heartedly waved his hand in the captain's direction, before laying back down into his near-comatose state on the floor. Meanwhile, Colt sat at the radio desk, dialing Smitty up again. It took several moments for the line to come on. I swear, don't you people have anything better to do than bother my old ass? The old man barked gruffly from the other end. Colt tried to steady his breathing. Smitty, it's Colt, he said. Damn you move fast, boy, the old man bellowed. You already past bullhead? No, still at the cabin, the captain said. Ain't really got time to chit-chat now, Smitty drawled. And I can't stress this enough. You need to get moving. Colt nodded tidily. We are, but no buts. Get moving now, the old man cut in. The captain's brow furrowed. What's going on? he asked. These things ain't killing most people, Smitty said. Colt glanced over at Dario, who sat up, a lot more focused than before as he listened. What are they doing? the captain asked. From the reports I have... If you're a civilian, they're putting you into makeshift camps, Smitty said. Nobody knows for what, though. Colt pursed his lips. And if you're not a civilian? he asked. It's going to sound crazy, the old man said with a sigh. The captain rolled his eyes. I carved up a seven-foot-tall space alien with a chainsaw in my living room this afternoon, he drawled. We are well past anything sounding crazy. Fair enough, Smitty said. Reports are that they are being injected with... something. Colt nodded slowly. Like a gun with a syringe at the end of it? he asked. Yep, that's the thing, the old man replied. What happens when they get injected? Colt asked. They kind of... disappear, Smitty said slowly. The soldiers shared a disbelieving glance before the captain turned back to the radio. What the hell do you mean, disappear? he asked. I don't know, man, Smitty said with an impatient grunt. The people giving the reports weren't exactly in their right mind. Said it looked like something you'd see in one of those space movies where they beam down to a planet. A transporter? Colt prompted. Yeah, that's the word, the old man replied. The captain nodded slowly, eyes unfocused. Might be something to that, he murmured. Might be something to that. So yeah... Try not to get dinged by one of those things, Smitty said. Colt shook his head as if to clear it. Not high up on my list, he admitted, but appreciate it. Now get moving, the old man growled. Wait, I got something for you, Colt said quickly. What you got? Smitty asked. The captain leaned forward in his chair. My buddy and I managed to take one of those things down with a clean headshot, he explained. Kind of got the body up here at my cabin, and the shield is still working. There was a beat of silence. I swear to God I would plant one right on the kisser if you were here, 
Smitty finally said. Thank God for small miracles that I'm not, Colt joked. Sorry, the old man gushed. It's just that nobody's been able to snag one of those critters, at least not intact. Colt nodded. I can give you the coordinates of my cabin if that won't work, Smitty cut in. You're the only person I'm in contact with that's in the region. Even if I could find somebody, transport is going to be a bitch and a half. You're going to have to take it with you to the safe house. Dario groaned and flopped back down on the floor. Colt nodded. All right, yeah, we'll figure it out, he promised. The sergeant suddenly sat up waving to his friend. Hang on a second, Colt said into the radio turning back. What's up? Ask him about their guns, Dario said. The captain's brow furrowed. The guns? he asked. Yeah, like, can we use them? Dario asked. Oh, gotcha, Colt said, nodding and turning back to the radio. Hey, Smitty, I'm back. Look, you heard anything about anybody being able to use those alien guns against them? Do not, under any circumstances, use one of their weapons, came the forceful reply. The captain winced. I'll take that as a no, he said dryly. Damn things are booby-trapped, Smitty continued. They explode or something? Colt asked. Nah, just does the same thing to the trigger puller that happens when a soldier is injected with that syringe gun or whatever the hell it is, the old man said. The captain pursed his lips for a moment. Hang on, I might be onto something, he said and broke away from the radio, walking over to the corpse. He picked up the alien's sidearm, inspecting the trigger mechanism. The weapon wasn't too differently designed than a normal handgun, just a bit bigger with some blue lights going along the barrel. He thought for a moment, looking at the trigger and just above it. There was a single small prong at the top just above the trigger. He glanced up at Dario. If I vanish, Smitty will tell you where to go, he said. The sergeant's eyes widened. Colt, he warned. Yeah, I know, his friend said. If this works, though... He trailed off with a shrug. Dario took a deep breath and nodded, and Colt made sure his finger was far down on the trigger as it could go. He gently pulled it, only a fraction of an inch, not enough to set it off. The prong at the top emerged ever so slightly, and as soon as he saw it, he released the trigger. We might be in business, he said with a grin, and looked down at the alien's hand. He picked it up and studied the trigger finger carefully. There was a metallic coating on it, like a glove, with some thin wire connecting it at the joints. He took out his knife and jammed it into the opening, cutting through it and the finger inside. It took him a few moments, but he managed to fully sever the finger, sending blue blood splattering onto the floor. He removed it from the casing, tossing the pale grey flesh to the side and slipping the metal over his own trigger finger. He took a deep breath. Here goes nothing, he breathed, and picked up the weapon, opening up the front door of the cabin and taking a few steps away. Dario close behind. Colt aimed at a rock about thirty yards away, taking a moment to get the tree in its sights. Finally, he squeezed the trigger. The gun took a brief moment to warm up before sending a bright blue plasma bolt flying through the air. It cut right through the rock face, causing it to shatter and fall to the ground. Hell yeah, Cap, Dario whooped. Colt looked at the trigger, pulling it ever so slightly and seeing the prong hitting harmlessly on the finger covering. I'll spread the word, the captain said, turning to his companion. You start freeing all of those fingers. On it, Dario said, and moved back into the corpse as Colt walked back to the radio. Smitty, got something for you, the captain said, excitement in his tone. What you got? The old man asked immediately. Figured out how to use their weapons against them, Colt said. The booby trap is at the top of the trigger mechanism. If you can get something to block it, you should be good to go. I'll get the word out, Smitty promised. We're heading out now, Colt said. Be in touch soon. The line went dead, and he walked back over to Dario, who was busy carving up the hand to free the metallic casings so they could use the alien weaponry. So, any idea how we're getting to the suburbs? The sergeant asked with a grunt as he stabbed a knife into flesh. Not sure how wise it is to get out on the main roads. Colt jerked a thumb over his shoulder. I got a couple four-wheelers out back, he said. Dario stopped working, dropping the knife and just looking up at his friend in disbelief. You have four-wheelers? He said slowly and deliberately. 
and we carried this big bastard up here on our own? The captain shrugged sheepishly. Yeah, I don't know how much gas is in them, he said, and figured we're going to conserve it since we're going to Phoenix. Dario just stared at him, slowly shaking his head. That's the story you're going with, he demanded. Yeah, I think so, Colt said with a firm nod. The sergeant let out a deep sigh. Okay then, he huffed. Go get him, I'll finish up. His friend backed away, knowing he had screwed up and slunk out of the room to get their transportation ready. <laughs>